Okay, I don't even know how to really start this video. I'm gonna be doing something kind of different and something that I am genuinely pretty excited for, also slightly scared for. I am just in the mood for some dark shit. I don't really want anything light and fluffy right now. I just want like nitty gritty, pushing the boundaries a bit. So I decided, let me find five super taboo, forbidden, sometimes banned romance books and let's read them together. So I have chose five books that I'm going to be reading over the next few weeks. After I've been reading more dark romance over the past like couple of months or so, just because like I said, I haven't been really wanting anything too like light and fluffy. I've been wanting a little more dark and sadistic a bit. So I'm like, why not just choose five super popular books and read them in this video? So that's what we're gonna do. I'm ready to like push some boundaries with reading. Starting out on the bit of the tamer side, the first, I don't know if I'm gonna read these in order, but here are the five that I'm gonna be reading. One is going to be Love Unexpected by QB Tyler. I have never read anything by this author before, so it is going to be my first book by her. Um, I'm excited for it. It is a stepfather, stepdaughter relationship, which I'm like, yeah, that's taboo, but we'll see how it goes. This one I think I have like a pretty good chance of actually liking just from like the synopsis. I think I, I think I'm gonna like this one. Next, I'm gonna be reading Priest by Sierra Simone, which like it sounds, it's a romance following a priest and someone, I'm not sure who the girl is, but obviously the man is a priest. Next is one that I have been eyeing for like a really long time and so many people love it and so many people hate it. See where I land on this but I'm going to be reading the first one which is Balanced by Lucia Franco. We're gonna see. I'm excited for this. It is between a gymnast and her coach and it is a large age gap and I believe the gymnast is like 16 when the relationship starts and obviously with everything that has happened over the past few years with the U.S. gymnastics team it's like it's been pretty controversial. These last two are ones that like are the two that I'm kind of most nervous not nervous about but they're definitely the most taboo on this list, and that is going to be Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. This is about a brother and a sister. However, everyone that I've seen talk about this book love it. Love it. We'll see. Last one is the one, this one's been banned off of Amazon. Like, I think I'm gonna have to buy it off of the author, author's website because like it's not available even on the Amazon to buy. And that is uh, The Wild by Kay Webster. With this one, it's between a father and a daughter. I know, I think pretty much everyone that I follow on YouTube doesn't like this book. I'm intrigued. Um, I'm also scared. We're just gonna see. We're gonna keep an open mind here. This is an open-minded video. If you are not here about that, if you are just here to say like that these books are disgusting, that's cool. You do not have to read them. Like no one is asking you to read them. I just want to and see how these go and see if I can further expand um, my romance reading genres or tropes. Although I'm not really assuming I'm going to develop like a priest trope, but you never know. Um, I'm gonna be starting with uh, Love Unexpected by QB Tyler. I feel like it's an, a good one to like ease into it. It's probably the one that I feel like is the least tab, although it is a stepfather, step stepdaughter. I mean, what does that say about me that I'm like, this is the least taboo one, but I don't care. Okay, so I am 54% of the way, I think, yes, 54% of the way through unexpected love or love unexpected why can't I get that right I keep switching it around anyways so just a little over halfway through and I can't say I don't like it um it's pretty good I like Stassi Dominic's like fine I do like him but I like Stassi's character this one is just kind of working for me um I don't really care about the age gap between them and I think the way that like their relationship has come together has made it seem like more natural like as natural as it can possibly be I really never saw Dominic and Stassi's mom together so I don't think we ever really got a clear picture of like their marriage so we never really got attached to her mom in any way where now like that she she died within like the first 
chapter or like the second chapter so I think that's helpful in a way that like we've only really ever known like Stasi and Dominic's dynamic just the two of them which I think makes it feel more mm, less weird pretty sure I know I was wearing this sweatshirt yesterday so it's going to look like I read this book in one day I didn't this is the second day that I've been reading it and I'm like 86% of the way through so I'm almost done and I think something's about to go down with Micah and Dominic which Micah I just like I don't care about um I'm still really liking it however there is just like so much banging in this that it's like I'm missing some storyline like literally I think from like 46% to almost like 65 was spent like pretty much like banging with like a few conversations mingled we get moments then of them talking about like their grief and how they're going through that and Dominic with how he's been a widow twice now and kind of going through that grief and how he wants to kind of like help guide Stassi through her own grief with losing her mother and I think those are really great moments those are really great conversations that are happening between the two of them and really interesting however we get like small bits of that and then they're just like back to banging. Just want more besides them just like having sex. It's getting like kind of annoying, which like, I mean, I'm all here for that, but not when it's taking up the majority of the time now in the book and we're losing out, I think, on like conversations that I would like to be seeing. Just finished Unexpected Love or Love Unexpected. I will save my final thoughts for the wrap up. Um, I thought the ending was pretty rushed, honestly, but overall... It was a good read. Alrighty, here is book number two. We're gonna jump into Balance next by Lucia Franco. It was just on sale for 99 cents. So that was awesome. Great timing for this. Did see that I'm kind of confused that these had to be like edited in order to stay on Amazon. So I want the unedited, obviously. And like for purposes of this video, we want the unedited. So I don't know what was changed or anything. So I think after I read this, I'm gonna look that up. I don't want any spoilers beforehand. I'm officially 25% of the way through Balance by Lucia Franco. And so far I'm liking it. Um, however, if, they, if you don't like gymnastics or don't like sports romances, you will really not like this book, I think. There's really no hint of a romance yet, which makes sense. I'd rather be slow burn with this age gap and with a coach, like rather than just like instantly they both are like, we love each other, that'd be weird. Like, I don't know what the hell they're saying half the time. When she's talking about tricks, I'm like, I have no clue. There is a word guide at the front of the book, but I'm reading an ebook, so it's not really convenient to like flip back and forth. So I'm either like just, reading past it not really knowing what the tricks are or I'm googling it which is kind of a pain but I mean honestly it's fine. Another thing I just wanted to note with Rhea um like you want to be in the Olympics but yet when like COVID tells you to do something you're constantly being like oh, I don't want to do that or like talking back or like getting annoyed and like girl I would too but if you want to be an Olympic athlete I think you kind of have to listen to your coach so I finished balance last night which that ending, I mean, how can I not read book two? Already as I was getting into it, I'm like, I know I'm gonna wanna read the rest of this series and I guarantee do. I honestly don't even wanna finish this video. I just wanna finish that series. I did really like it. I really like Rhea and Kova's like whole hot and cold deal they got going on. Um, the taboo factor is definitely like super high with this one because of the age gap. Like the coach uh, athlete thing like makes it taboo, but like, I don't really think that is like, the biggest element of that I do think it is like the age gap in this book so I'm gonna have a lot more thoughts to like talk about at the end of the video here okay so I started priest last night and I'm only like 10% of the way through I didn't get very far but I will just say um it is like a little insta lovey for my taste right now um I do prefer a bit of a slow burn similar to off balance where there was like really no romance for the first like what almost like 40 percent or something i kind of like that i like a slow burn there are so many moments in here that i think like could genuinely make for a very interesting story like i do like the idea of this priest who is pretty much became a priest against his family's wishes and pretty much to make 
genuine changes in the Catholic religion because his sister was molested by a priest when he was younger and then his family was like ostracized by the church after she committed suicide and exposed him and like gave out his list of other victims and I think there's something really admirable about Tyler's choices and wanting to make genuine change and I like that and it makes his conflict more interesting because then when he's faced with if I want to be with Poppy, I have to basically give up on my sister. That's how he feels. That's not how I'm saying that it comes across. That's how Tyler feels. Then he's giving up on his sister. But if he wants to pursue, pursue this change, he can't be with Poppy and he can't be happy. And I think it's pointing out a lot, like some hypocrisies within religion. And again, I'm not trying to start like, I'm not trying to start like a religious discussion on here just with like this book. But I do just think, it's interesting and this book is making me think a lot in terms of that. While he is a priest, he's not necessarily, like he does have a relationship with God and you can tell that he like genuinely loves what he does and caring for people and talking with people and enlightening them, I guess. But there is like that bit of disconnect with the religion overall just because of his past experiences with his sister and his family and I do think that that is interesting and it also makes his choices then make more sense or not so out of left field because he kind of has like that little tiny kernel of doubt in him that then he's kind of like why is it wrong that I want to be with Poppy and like it shouldn't be wrong so I do find that fascinating I just think the logic behind Tyler's choices is interesting and sometimes I just wish we were getting like a little more of that but I don't know I am liking it it's just um it's making me think a lot so I guess that's a good thing okay I just finished Priest so I think like initial off the bat I think I'd give it like a three and a half out of five it did give me a lot to think about um, I don't know. It just, it wasn't my favorite thing that I've ever read. Uh, I mean, Taboo Factor was up pretty high. I mean, obviously, it's a priest. Yikes. And there was a lot of, um, canoodling going on in the church. And I was like, oh, we're going there. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I'll gather more of my thoughts, obviously, for at the end of the video. But off the bat, like, I liked it, but not my favorite. So I'm 25% into the wild and I'm just, I have questions. First of all, who parks their RV on the edge of a cliff? Um, I'm no wilderness expert, but that doesn't seem like a smart idea. And then when said RV goes over the cliff and you like lose all your stuff and your wife dies, you just decide to like stay out there. It's just so, and like I get it, I'm always like fiction, whatever, like I read a bunch of like fantasy and dystopians and things with magic, but like this seems like so outlandish to me. <laughs> I like more believe in fairies than I do that this would seem like a logical choice. Things are starting to like change in Devin and Reed's relationship, which I, I knew was coming, so... I mean, you might as well rip the bandaid off there. But they have not even, like, really acknowledged the fact that the mother is dead. Like, she was dangling from a tree with, like, her arm detached. And they're just like, let's send her down the river. <gasps> that's it. That's it. There's just so much of this book so far that's just so, like, what is going on? That it's making it entertaining to read. Like, I'm entertained. <laughs> Okay, so I'm 52% of the way through the wild. I'm not loving it. I find the... I find just everything outrageous. <laughs> and then these three guys show up and completely terrorize them. Especially Devin. And I'm just... It was not... It was not... It was too much. I'm not vibing with it. So I'm just ready to kind of finish it at this point. So let's just hope this next 50% goes quick. <laughs> I just finished The Wild. So that was, first of all, a super quick read. I started and finished it tonight, like after I read Priest. 
definitely my least favorite that I've read so far. What the hell did I just read? Um, my least favorite, it wasn't just because of Devin and Reed's relationship, it was also because they're like the only two characters half the time. Actually, not even half the time, for the majority of the book. I like, I just, I don't really even know how to prop. I don't know. It's just, there. it's so illogical to me. So many things that happen in that book, just like. Okay, so I am five chapters into Forbidden, and I'm really liking it so far. Like, pretty much right from the first chapter, I was intrigued. Just the chaos that is this family, the sibling dynamics at play, the younger siblings, the older siblings, the mother, like everything so far is just piquing my interest. I'm really intrigued by Lockin, I think that's how you say it, and Maya. Um, just like you can already just tell the absolute shitty situation that both of them are put in as being the parents to their three younger siblings and how much they rely on each other and how they're only 13 months apart so they've kind of grown up as twins and just like that close relationship together just as like a sibling bond is really solidified already for me as a reader and I'm only five chapters in so that's great. So I'm on chapter 13 of Forbidden and like my heart just already feels heavy and I don't I mean I love it I love it because I love to be emotionally wrecked and I think that's where we're headed it's just like a feeling in my chest right now that this book is giving me and the writing is beautiful the characters I love Lockin I love Maya the sibling dynamic between then all five of them is just I don't know it's so authentic so I have about I'm on page 343 so I think I have about 100 pages left in Forbidden and I'm just I'm really genuinely really liking this book and I don't want it to be over for multiple reasons um I'm just genuinely enjoying it I love Lachlan's character I think he's very interesting and I want more of him um, and also because I just, I don't really want to know how this all plays out, but I do, but I don't, but I do, but I don't. But I have a feeling, I mean, I know it doesn't end happy, but I have a feeling it's almost going to end tragically. I have theories about Lachlan, but I don't want, I don't want them to be true because I don't think that he would ever leave like Maya and the rest of the siblings behind. But also I feel like certain things that he's saying doesn't bode well for him, so... I don't know. I'm just nervous. <laughs> I'm not okay. <laughs> that was a rough last hundred pages. I mean like a rough book in general. The ending, oh my god. Like everything Locken did made so much sense to his character and I don't even know. Maya's epilogue at the end was just ugh. the one thing about this book is that it's love on like a so much deeper level than any of the other books that I read in this video clearly and honestly any other books like honestly I can't think of a book where like this kind of love just so like pure and deep and not like surface level at all not just like attraction level like, just deep, unending love for a person. Like, I genuinely can't think of a book like that. Man, this book has, like, fucked me up. <laughs> it was so good, though. I still haven't stopped. <laughs> I still haven't gotten myself together, like, three hours post-finishing this book. I'm on another level of destroyed. But. This was a fun time nonetheless. <laughs> We're officially done. We've read these five taboo banned super forbidden books and it was a fun time. Like genuinely I had a lot of fun reading these. The first one that I read was Love Unexpected by QB Tyler and I kind of rated these within a few different categories. So overall enjoyment of the book I'd give this one like a four. Um, the steam level is a five. Taboo was a five, 
but overall plot I put it like a three so I think like overall I think I'd give this book like about a three three and a half stars out of five I really liked Stasi. I liked the interracial relationship representation that you don't see a ton in romance novels I thought that was great it was a super fun easy read the sex was like fantastic in this book there were a lot of things that I enjoyed however I do think that I just wanted more out of the plot and by the end of the book I was left being like that's it like we're not gonna get any more out of this I wanted more of the grandparents I wanted more of Seth and Ellen I wanted more of Kate I just wanted more of the side characters playing a larger role in the plot especially at the end when like it comes to light we don't see any of that and that I want to see that conversation with the grandparents go down like this is a stepfather and a stepdaughter falling in love after his wife is killed slash her mother is killed like I want to see those conversations happen and we didn't see any of that one of the things that was really great I thought in their relationship and that made it not so or that made it somewhat believable was the fact that they both were going through the same grief and also that Dominic had gone through it with his first wife and losing her and being a widow already and then being widowed again like he'd already been through all the stages of grief so it was cool to see the two of them bonding over the different stages however I wanted more of that again I just I wanted more by the time that they finally built up to being like screw it let's just jump right in uh then that's like all that we got obviously I like that in books but I don't want that to be the whole plot like I'd rather them just like not be doing that and getting more plot than that's all that they're doing and getting like none of it I did sometimes get a bit of an ick factor with this one just because in certain circumstances like they would be talking and then they would bring up the mom and I was like can we just unless if we're talking about grief can we just like leave her out of this now like take her out of the equation here it was just a little old so overall though I did enjoy it I would recommend it if you're like thinking of picking it up I definitely would it was a really fun read um but overall I think my overarching thought on this is just I wanted more okay so then after Love Unexpected I jumped into Priest by Sierra Simone overall enjoyment I'd put it like a four taboo I would put it like a four I mean it is but like also for me I'm just I think I should like preface this and say that like I'm not Catholic I grew up in like a non-denominational non household so like the rules of a priest for me I'm just like why why can't they marry like I'm not trying to start like a religious discussion here so for me the taboo level like while he's a priest I'm also like buddy like why not steam is a five mm -hmm. and oh plot is like eh, again like a three and a half overall i think i would give it like three stars i did really like it um i liked tyler's internalized struggle that you see throughout the whole book the fact that he is a priest but he he also has some like underlying um, anger at the church a bit is really fascinating and it makes it more believable that he's willing to like leave behind this entire job and livelihood for Poppy. I think if he didn't have that beforehand, it wouldn't make sense. You'd be like, what are you doing? Like you just met this girl. It was so instantaneous of Tyler to be like, I'm in love with this girl from like the very beginning that it made it like a little unbelievable. There's so much focus on like looks and like sexual drive that it wasn't really a lot of like two people genuinely like getting each other and like caring about each other you got that down the line but it was still so overpowered by like physical attraction which is just it's not my favorite I'd rather see like them love each other for who they are more so than just the fact that they're super physically attracted to each other like the religion undertones was interesting as someone who grew up in a religious household and has since kind of questioned things like it was just an interesting read and made me think a lot about like religion overall which was something that I wasn't expecting to get out of this book so it was cool see next was balance by Lucia Franco so this was one that I think I would have read like the quickest or the one that I knew I would for sure read even without this video and I am excited that I did I loved this book I would give it like fives across the board and like plot 
steam taboo level overall enjoyment like everything I would give it a five I really loved this book yes there is a giant age gap age gap doesn't super bother me honestly like that's not really like a hard limit when I'm reading I haven't read too many sports romances however I do like them um, I like sports. I like gymnastics. I always like watching it on the Olympics, although I know nothing about it. So I ended up just Googling things a lot. And like my YouTube search history is now like just a ton of gymnastics tricks because I was just trying to wrap my mind around it. So I do like that aspect that it is like heavily sports based and that it's not just like this romance playing out that it's really intermingled. I love that Rhea has like goals in mind and she's set on them and she is very determined. I think that's something that like really bonds her and Kova and makes the relationship make sense. She did get kind of annoying sometimes. I was like, if you want this so bad, like why are you questioning your coach? Just like do it. However, if I was told to run like four miles a day, I'd be like, sorry, no thank you. <laughs> Good. I really also like that this was a slow burn. Like I don't think almost until like what, 40% maybe there was really no inkling of like attraction developing between the two of them really or like anything going on romantically which I like this needs to be a slow burn it cannot be like an insta love kind of thing with the story especially with it being five books like I love that it's taking the time to plant the seeds of these two people getting to know each other first before they're all of a sudden like I'm in love like priests they were like in love and then they got to know each other but this one they're like getting to know each other and then are they in love I don't know also, I'm living and breathing for the toxic energy in this relationship. I don't care. Like, if people don't like that in books, that's fine. Like, I'm saying that I love it in books. Real life would be different, but I'm living for it in this. I like that there are a lot of plot points that are sprinkled in. And that it sounds weird to say that I'm glad that this is like five books, but I'm so glad that she didn't try to rush everything in one because it would have just been a mess. I mean, granted, I don't know what happens post this book, I'm only 25% into the second book, which I'm doing a reading vlog on, so stay tuned for that. That'll probably be up after this sometime. Who knows, however long it takes me. I'm just really excited to see where this series goes. Next up, I read The Wild by Kay Webster. So this was one that I don't think I would have read if it wasn't for doing this video. Like, I felt like I couldn't do this video and not read this book because this is like the one that everyone talks about the most. And I had to experience it for myself. And honestly, it's not an experience I ever want to take again. Just The Wild by Kay Webster was not for me. Kay Webster's writing, I liked. And I do have other books on my Goodreads uh, TBR list from Kay Webster that I definitely want to give a shot at. This one just was not for me. The entire relationship, I got the ick factor from the whole time. I never once got that with Rhea and Kova or Tyler and Poppy. I got that a little bit with Stassi and Dominic, but in the last book I'm going to talk about Forbidden, I never once got that with Lachlan and Maya. Like this book just felt icky to me. Also, it's just so illogical. Who parks their trailer parallel to the edge of a cliff? when there's a storm and then when said trailer goes tumbling down a cliff and you find your wife hanging from a tree arm detached and you're like we'll just set up here like go home i know you like liquidated your assets but come on like don't just start living out in the wild i don't know it was just there were so many illogical points to me that i just i didn't like and then at the end this I think this was this was spoiled for me. I'm pretty sure I already spoiled it already, but spoiler alert if you don't want to know, um, I'll give you a moment, flip ahead. Uh, the fact that then at the very end, after we've been believing this whole time that they're father and daughter, and then at the end it's like, oh, JK, she was adopted. <sighs> give me a break. There's nothing about this book that I liked. I hated the extra characters that came in and the incident that happened that then like turned him into being like overly protective like I hated that whole incident I hated that it all happened I didn't I didn't like this book and I think I ended up giving it two stars on Goodreads just because I really hate giving out one stars because it's like I I know an author took a lot of time into this book and like the writing is not bad that's not the thing it's just like the relationship and the plot didn't work for me so I did end up giving it two stars on Goodreads however like me myself knowing I give it a one star <laughs> and it's just it wasn't for me the taboo level was a five the steam level honestly wasn't that great like a four plot 
a one and like overall enjoyment like a one it just it didn't work for me I'm glad that this book was as short as it was I read it in one night and it just it really didn't work for me whatsoever I didn't like either of the characters I didn't like the relationship the plot just seemed outlandish and I want to be done talking about it now for the true star of this video up until I read this book balance was my favorite that I read out of this video here and balance I would still say is my second favorite and I'm very excited to read the rest of the series however this this book I think might be one of my in my top tens of 2020 I'll be counting that down at the end of the year of the top 10 books slash book series that I read this year and honestly I think this secured a spot on it this book was just incredible it was it, I like I still can't get over it it's been a couple of days since I finished it and I still can't stop thinking about this non-stop I just want to say people go into it open-minded I get that like from the outside it sounds crazy of Locke and Amaya a brother and sister falling in love I promise it's not icky I really don't even know I feel like this is going to be a ramble but let's jump into it um plot five overall enjoyment five steam it's why it's way more ya i'd say it's like maybe like a one like it's really ya and there's not barely any of it in here and how their circumstances like thrust them together and really force them to be parents before they ever had like should be it's just i like i I don't even know what else to say. They make total sense. You never once feel gross. It's super slow. Like I think not even like halfway through, maybe like just about halfway through is when they first start like being like, oh, maybe like we have always seen each other more as like equals rather than as brother and sister and like as best friends. Like they've always said they see each other as best friends more than brother and sister because they're born very closely. In age I think it said they're only like 13 months apart and their mom is like never around so they pretty much only had each other to rely on and then they have these three younger siblings that they're parenting this whole time the family dynamics were incredible to read the character development not only for Locke and Amaya but also then for Kit and Tiffin and Willa the three younger siblings was great like the chaos that Tabitha Suzuma wrote about their lives you can just feel it in the exhaustion that <laughs> weighs on them for having to go to school, come home, be parents, get their kids, get the little kids off to school. Like, it's just so well done, it's so beautifully written. Never once did I ever get like an ick factor moment. It's never once really focused on like a physical attraction. It really is more like souls connecting in a way. And oh, it's just so beautiful so painfully heartbreakingly beautiful obviously this relationship is a no like it's a no-no like that's ugh. even when you hear like read brother and sister you're like mm, no no but she handles it in such a way that you can't help but your heart just like bleeding for these two characters and just she writes it so delicately and so well that you just I you buy into it now skip ahead I am going to talk about the ending here I'm gonna put like a spoiler warning and skip ahead to the end of the video or like skip ahead to when I'm done talking about spoilers if you don't want to know the ending of this so I'll just I'll give you a moment you can jump ahead or click out you know whatever you want I don't tell you what you have to do but just take a moment I was I was getting signs throughout the book. Locken's character to me is the best written character of this whole series. His social anxiety, his panic attacks, talking in public, the stress of the kids, his accidental dislocating of Willa's arm, like you can just, and then the fights with Kit, like you can just tell how much he genuinely is trying he is just trying his best. And for a 17 slash 18 year old, like you should not have to be trying this hard. Like you should not have to have these responsibilities on your plate. So I couldn't help but just love Locken. I knew it was coming. I didn't want to believe, I didn't know it was coming. I just thought maybe I didn't want to believe it. And how Locken gets arrested 
and his last interaction with Maya, his last interaction with Kit, how he said that he never really got a chance to say goodbye to Tiffin and Willa before he went to jail, and his thought process of sitting in that cell when he ultimately decides what he wants to do. That scene, his final chapter, is insanely well done. The chaos and the panic and the desperation is so visceral on that page that I it's like out of this world to me. I think the hardest thing for me to get past with his death in this book is that he didn't want to die. All throughout the book we kind of get signs that he's not okay mentally but it's the fact that in those final moments it's mentioned multiple times that he's like my brain is telling me to back down but my body says keep going and like the blight the white blinding terror and even as he is like up in that final moment by that window and is like I don't want to do this but he's like I have to set them free and I have to go away if I want to set them free that I'm like I know this might seem ridiculous, but like I'm getting choked up thinking about it. It's just so, that chapter hit so hard and like, <laughs> not in a bad way. Like it, it was beautiful and I'm so glad that it was written like that, but it was just a lot. And I think it's the fact that he didn't want to do it, but that he knew it was his only choice and that he would do anything for Maya and his other siblings and even his last thoughts are of them it's crushing it's really crushing and then Maya's epilogue is just as bad just seeing what it's done to her and the other siblings it does end on a happy note at least but or like on a brighter note for the four of them and you can only hope that like it sounds I know like it might seem dumb to be like this emotional like I'm trying to like this is not real but like it feels so real and that and Locken's final scene was just oh it just really really was a lot but I'm not saying that that's a bad thing like it was everything that I could have ever wanted for his final moment or not really but the route that was chosen like it was executed really well. I think like if you're looking to read this book like I promise it's just it's not gonna it's not icky and they even say in here like how like our love doesn't hurt anyone like we only hurt ourselves like by didn't by making each other unhappy by trying to deny this like why why can't we and like yes it's it is what it is but it's really like I don't even know what I'm trying to say I think it's just the fact that like they're right like really who else are they hurting besides themselves but obviously then when you think about like real life it's like oh <laughs> but in the book I don't know this book was just so beautiful and I just had one more thought after I had like paused this and done my outro and everything but I think like coherently I didn't necessarily get across correctly in this um, or not necessarily I don't think I was like super coherent and like I still don't really feel that way but one other thing I want to say I love character death in books and tv shows and movies I'm like a huge proponent of it if you listen to my podcast popcorn chats you know that this however the self-sacrifice is beautiful and I understand it and I get it and Locken's actions make sense because he has only ever looked out for Maya and his siblings however this one is like almost harder to swallow than like the Divergent series or Throne of Glass like other characters I won't say who but like other characters in those series when they have made self-sacrifices those feel different because they wanted to make that choice or like they were at peace with that choice you reading this you know that Locken has no peace in his choice and I think that's why it's like that much more brutal because while in those other books like those characters deaths are horrible and sad and I was upset by those too and like I cried at those but they felt different because they knew they were at peace 
I think that's just the ultimate thing. They were at peace with their choice and Lachan wasn't. And ugh, I need to stop talking about it. Read this book, read this book. <laughs> okay, now that I'm like about to cry, <laughs> we are done. This was a super fun video to do. It was a really great exposure to five new authors that I haven't read anything before. Now I'm reading the rest of the Off Balance series, so I'm excited to get into that. I'm definitely gonna check out more from Tabitha Suzuma. So if you have any of her other books that you really like or recommend, let me know. If anyone would like to see another one of these videos, also let me know about that. I'd be totally open to doing more. Just like let me know what some other books would be that uh, you'd want to see. Because I am i don't really have too many like hard limits in books. I would just say anything similar to The Wild is not going to be it for me. Um, but also I think that was too with The Wild was there was literally no other characters in that book basically besides the two of them. The mom was in there for a hot second but it was basically the two of them out in the wild and I just got bored. I just got bored with just the two of them especially when I didn't really like either of them. <laughs> Let me know of anything that you'd be interested in seeing me read and doing a reading vlog on but otherwise stay tuned. I will have my off balance reading vlog up soon and this is going to go, I'll have my November reading wrap ups coming up soon where I'll quick gloss over the rest of these and everything else that I've read in the month. And yeah, I guess stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time.